the custom officer says, no, you can't have what you came here for. You know, she, it, it's just for a class project, please. She didn't walk away. She persevered. What's up, everybody? It's Jack Flynn, and this is the Pure World Podcast. Let's get it started. What's up, everybody? It's Jack, and this is the Pure World Podcast. I'm so glad you're here. This is actually the first podcast we are ever releasing, so it's pretty exciting. Our podcasts are going to have some guests today. I'm just going at it solo. I'd like to tell you guys some stories about the secrets and behind the scenes challenges that I've personally faced while trying to build this brand. To start off, a little bit of context. Pure World was started at Babson College as a class project. At Babson in Wellesley, Massachusetts, every single freshman is tasked with starting a business as this class project. They're in a team of 14 other people and the school basically funds their business idea. The first semester you come up with the idea, the second semester you use those funds and you actually run the business. My team had come up with this idea during our first semester. Basically, you know, the company was called Stixer and it was this wall pocket, silicon, which is not sustainable. But this silicon um, pocket that you could stick anywhere besides your bed, you could put your phone in it, uh, in your bathroom, you could put your toothbrush in it. Basically, it was multifaceted. But the problem with that was we learned that we were unable to source it. We were going to try to get it from India. I mean, there were about six Indian students on our team and none of them could really figure out how to source this product. The second semester was already starting and every other business had started running their businesses and we were at square one again. We couldn't go through with the business that we had planned all semester and so we had a late night brainstorming session probably until like 2 a.m. and one of our classmates, Anna, who is from Nepal, said that she felt like she could confidently import the hemp backpacks that were made in her hometown in Kathmandu. And that was our biggest challenge at the time was actually getting products into the United States so we could sell them and and like do this class project. And when she showed me the bag, I I saw so much potential in it, obviously, because I've continued it for so long. We were so far behind and there was this thing at Babson called the Expo where all of the businesses come and they like, it's a launch party and people buy a lot of products from each other and stuff like that. We were just coming up with our idea and there was about two weeks until this expo. Anna helps coordinate the whole task of getting the bags into Boston so we could sell them at this expo. It's the night before the expo and she has to go herself. She has to take a bus to go to New York City to go to JFK Airport to receive a couple boxes of about 100 bags. And at the time, they were just 100 random styles of bags. We didn't design them or anything. And she got to JFK and went to receive the bags. And the the customs lady told her that she needed a customs form for the importation. Anna had no idea about this. I remember her messaging our team, and we had no idea either. And we were afraid that the bags would never get to Boston. Long story short, you know, it's just for a class project, please. She convinces the customs officer to let her take the bags back to Boston. She gets on her bus. She's supposed to arrive in Boston around 2 a.m. You know, she has been traveling all day to get these bags, and it's my job to go pick her up. However, I don't have a car, so... Priya, another student, lets me borrow her car, and I'm off. I'm, I'm going to go and pick up Anna. As I leave campus in Priya's car, I'm like already afraid that, you know, it's not my car. I don't want to crash it or anything. I'm, I'm driving this car, and my phone dies, and I don't have a charger. I'm pretty young at the time. I'm like, I got to, I don't even, I barely know where I'm going, I, but Anna's waiting for me. She's relying on me. I'm her ride home and she's just waiting at this bus stop in the middle of the night in Boston. I mean, I guess I just followed signs. I got to where I needed to be and she was there, sure enough, waiting on the side of the road with two big boxes of bags. That night we brought him back to Babson, started putting our tags on them and really celebrated this accomplishment of rapidly coming up with a business idea and actually having 
the operations to bring in products and the next day was the expo. And so I went out there and sold and I sold probably 40% of our inventory in that first day. We broke even. That was a huge accomplishment, but also just the first experience of, of a challenge where failure was so close, but we persevered and we kept moving and Anna didn't let the customs officer not let her walk away with the bags. You know, we kept at it. And that's been a theme throughout our journey the whole time. Another little challenge that that we've faced is breaking out of the friends and family stage. What that is, is basically for the four years that I ran the business in, in college, I was only selling to friends and friends of friends. It was all word of mouth, but word of mouth doesn't spread that quickly. And you can only sell so many bags from word of mouth, especially we weren't in any retail stores or anything like that. We didn't grow that much for four years. We kept refining this brand identity, but we weren't selling that many bags. It wasn't until I graduated college and decided that I was going to run the brand full time that I had to take it seriously that we actually started to grow. And I think within the first three months of me running Pure World full time, I probably sold 10 times more bags than I did the prior four years. And that was through paid advertising. I started running Facebook and Instagram ads and I I started paying for them. And it was scary at first, spending $100 in one day for one day of ads, not knowing if I'm ever going to make the sales that'll give me back the money. So I had to have some money that I was willing to just kind of burn and throw away and not worry about just to try this out. And that's what I did. And the thing is with ads, are it's not immediate. You, you spend the money and the sales don't come in that day. They come in two, three days later. And so you're kind of sitting on your fingers and your hands and you're wondering, is this even a good idea? Well, it turned out to be. And I started running those ads in August, which was back to school season and things skyrocketed. It was incredible. And so that taught me that you need to invest You need to spend money to make money. That's basically what I did, and that's what we did, and we grew a ton. That's a theme that we carry with us, and and that's why we invest in this professional equipment, like these microphones and the camera that we're using right now, is because we know that it's going to provide value later on. Another challenge is there are hemp backpacks on the internet, and we know that. We're not the only hemp backpacks in the world. I mean, Nepal is pumping out hemp backpacks all, all around. So how does Pure World become different? How do we differentiate ourselves? And this was when we started to really design our own bags. We decided to design an entire collection of about 20 products. It was really difficult, but we learned that, you know, we'll design five new bags and one of them will become a bestseller and we'll carry it with us for months and months and almost even years. And so that's what we've been learning is you're not going to find those perfect bags without trying and designing. And now we're even doing cool things like community designing contests with our battle of the bags. That's what, what I learned about differentiating ourselves is we can differentiate ourselves in the style and in the quality of the bags. And so we also changed manufacturers to one of the most professional grade manufacturers in all of Nepal. Now we sell the highest quality hemp backpacks on the market. I mean, the bags that we were selling back in college, which was a different manufacturer, far less professional, they were ripping, they were breaking. And then we decided, you know, that's a problem. We need to change that because Every other hemp backpack company may be okay with their customers' bags breaking, but that's unacceptable for us. Those are ways that we thought about differentiating ourselves. And and that's always a challenge with a business because there are competitors in almost everything. You got to figure out what those angles are on how you can differentiate yourself. Another challenge is that, that we've gone through is building a team. There have been many, many months over the last four or five years where I was the only person working on Pure World. 
but one person can't do it all. And so I knew that we had to, to, to build a team. At the same time, I knew that it's difficult to finance a team when everybody is expecting American minimum wages and salaries. People who work at McDonald's make $20 in some places an hour. And it's just at our scale, we can't afford that. And yet there are really talented people all over the world. And so to solve that problem, we started looking elsewhere outside of the United States. People have skills all over the world. We started to work with people who are in the Philippines because they are great with technology and online services and video editing, creative social media management, and they speak really great English. And so we were able to build this team, which added another flavor to our brand. You know, we had this Nepali flavor from our manufacturing, but now we have a team of people in the Philippines and that adds another flavor. And we've got our fulfillment in Virginia. And that's a, that's a completely different flavor than where I am, you know, growing up in Boston and Robbie in Boston. And so we're creating this global team that brings culture at the forefront. I mean, that's really important because having team members from different places who have different backgrounds is how you you mesh great ideas and great perspectives together. Basically, we, we found these awesome, these awesome people out in the Philippines and we started delegating work to them. And then eventually they became full-time members and, you know, they're part of the team. Another challenge that we faced was, I mean, that's happened every year, actually, the holiday demand. Every year, it's so surprising how much our customers turn out for us to support us. And I mean, they want bags and, and Christmas time and the holidays is when they go and buy them or they ask for them from their family as gifts. Every year, we sell so many and unexpectedly sell out and then we have to get a new order in. And then it's always this deadline for December 24th, Christmas Eve. We got to get the bags there so that they can be given as gifts for Christmas. And it's hard because it's a rigid deadline. And we don't want to turn anybody away and say, no, we can't sell this item as a Christmas gift because it's not going to arrive in time. Instead, we try to bend over backwards to make sure everything arrives in time. I remember planning it out so perfectly last year that the bags would, the you know, the the pre-order bags would come in from Nepal at a perfect time when we would have a, a, enough time for the USPS to ship them and deliver them by Christmas based on their usual shipping times. But then the USPS took way too long to deliver that year. And they were super delayed because everybody's shipping things. I remember a couple people missed their deliveries in time for Christmas. And I just remember feeling so bad about that and never wanting that to happen again. I mean, that's a lesson that we're kind of still trying to learn. And it happens during back to school season, this past back to school season, people needed their bags for the, the school year. People start school at all different times across the country. I don't know if you noticed this, but there could be almost as much as a month difference between people in Florida and people up in Massachusetts. They start school very differently. And so it's hard for us to anticipate that and make sure that we can get everybody what they need for their fixed deadlines. And so that's something that as a retailer business, I mean, every e-commerce business I'm sure has issues like that and challenges. That is, that's a difficult one. Okay, another really, really recent challenge we had was with our influencer collab with Emily Stevens. She is a podcast guest. If you haven't already, I mean, it might be up. It should be up by the time you're listening to this. I mean, she her podcast is really awesome. You should go listen to it. She's a really cool person. Basically, what happened was we designed this collection of bags with her and designed a patch with her. You know, she we created this kind of brand around what she's all about. And on the patch, it said designed by Emily Stevens. Well, our patch manufacturer, for some reason, edited the artwork and changed the spelling of her name. So it said Emily Steppens. They removed the H for like no reason. We have no idea why they did that. We were going to release this thing in time for the school year because people buy bags for the school year. And we had to delay it 
about an entire month. That is a challenge that we could never anticipate. It's just our systems getting more and more complex. There are more third-party partners that we're trying to work with. And if they make any mistakes, it totally disrupts our timeline. We had to delay it. And I remember giving a lot of uh, grief to the patch manufacturing company because, I mean, like they, they really messed up our entire plan, which we spent so much time to make accurate. And then for some problem outside of our control, it all gets screwed up. That was, uh, that was definitely um, unfortunate, but we learn about it, right? We double check the work. We have to anticipate that there are going to be problems in our timelines so that there is extra time to make up for it. The final challenge that I wanted to talk about that I face running Pure World is, is a very personal one. And it's just about wondering whether or not I'm going in the right direction personally. And I think that there are other team members who feel the same way, who, who work with Pure World. That's a question that you really got to dig in deep to understand, bringing it back full circle to the first story when Anna had to go and get the bags from customs in New York City while she was alone as a freshman in college and the custom officer says, no, you can't have what you came here for. She didn't walk away. She persevered. That's kind of something for me that I take with me in building this business is perseverance. It's being okay with the uncertainty of the success because it's the byproducts of all of these challenges that I just talked about. The lessons learned and the growth opportunities are really the pieces of value. It's not the it's not the money that we make or the status, the number of followers. Who cares about that? It's how how we are each growing as individuals. That's what keeps me going. But when other people ask me about it, it's it's hard to sell that idea, you know? When people are like, oh, you're going to be doing this for the rest of your life? You know, how much money are you make? And questions like that, I'm like, it's not about those things. It's about, do I love waking up every day? And how much better of a person am I today than I was last year? And how much more capable I am. And I think that goes with anything that is challenging. You've got to persevere through those challenges. And that's what makes you a better person. And that's the topic for today. Have a pure day. And I hope you guys like this video. Comment down below if you have any other ideas for topics or guests or whatever you guys want to see. We'd love to create the content that you guys want. If you don't already follow Pure World on Instagram, it's at Pure World Brands. If you don't already have a bag, support us because your support means the world. It's what keeps us going. Yeah. Thank you. See ya.